Hi, it's uh, Liam and Carl here from PresentationExpressions.com. So in this video, we're going to once again look at some presentations. We're actually going to show you the presentation this time, and we're going to talk about how we could have improved the slides in this presentation to not only make the content more interesting and maybe more fun to watch or whatever, but uh, just to say that it could be done even in a scientific type of presentation. Right, and I think also what's very important to say here, Carl, is we're going to improve the slides and the look of them, but not take away from the content itself. Right, and also to say that this is not a criticism of the person that made this presentation. It's nothing to do with that at all. It's really just as a learning tool to say that if you were to give a presentation like this, and this is how you would have normally done it, now you don't have to do it that way. Exactly. Okay. So if we look at this particular slide here, the very first thing that strikes us from this opening um, introductory slide is the fonts. Right. I mean, I think one of the unspoken rules, I think, in presentations is you've got to be careful with your font choice. Um, if you have any curves um, within the font, as an example, like this is a very curvy font, um, unfortunately it takes away from the letters and it can be very difficult to see from a distance. Right, not only that, but if you're giving a presentation that is somewhat formal, like this here, this is a this is something for it says here nanotoxicology and occupational hygiene group. This is obviously something quite important and serious, so you don't want to use a font that looks too casual, such as the one here. You do want to use a more formal looking font. Yeah, or a more conservative font. Yeah. Right, exactly. So let's look at this next slide here and see. The first thing that struck me here, Carl, was the colors. The colors that the person's used um, on the slide here, and also the different sizes of font themselves. Well, I think the reason why they have different sizes is if you look in the section here, they're actually just photocopying something mm -hmm. out of a textbook. So not only is it not very clear because uh, it's being photocopied from a rather maybe old textbook, but it doesn't really fit in with what's going on. And it, there's a real kind of, with the title here, um, of course, we can talk all we want about using just single keywords and, and whatever you want to talk with, about with that. Mm -hmm. But mainly, it's so disorganized looking. Yes, and, and you, you kind of don't know where to put your eyes. Actually, you don't know where to look. You don't know which area is more important than another. Right, right. And so we're going to notice also that we're going to see this uh, logo down here throughout the entire presentation, which is also something that is really unnecessary when you're giving any kind of presentation. It's not necessary to have a box at the top that shows your title, then a box in the middle that shows your content, and then a box at the bottom that has your logo or something. Really unnecessary for any type of presentation. Yeah, you know, as we always say, Carl, it simple is better, right? Right. So when you look at this next one here, they're trying to they're trying to make it a little bit interesting. So I don't know if they were going to have this come out with animation or whatever, but I think again, it doesn't look overly professional because of the type of font that was used. So we can't really say as to how this was presented, but judging from the size and the amount of information that is here, it's probably not going to be very interesting. Right, and I think what might also add confusion to this particular slide is not only the amount on the slide itself, but we've actually got the way the font is written on the slide. You know, we've got obviously um, you know, the normal way font would be written, but then we've got it slanted um, over on the right-hand side of the slide here, which is confusion for the eye, I think. Well, if we were to change this slide right here, we can see that they have different questions here. Is it a nanomaterial? Is it a manufactured nanomaterial? So rather than trying to talk about all these different things on one particular slide, it would have been better to choose the very first thing you want to talk about and only mention that on this slide and then have another slide that defines it and then another slide that goes on to the next thing that you want to define or next question that you want to answer in this case. And, and I think that's a really important point you've just made there, Carl. You know, don't feel you have to put all the information onto one slide. You can break it down into three or four slides. Right. So then when we come to this slide here, they did remove the bottom part, which is quite nice to see. Um, one thing here is when they talk about, let's see, challenges varies with type of manufactured NM and NM product. So they're going to talk about challenges here. So I think if they're going to mention the challenges, they might want to specify, okay, what is the first challenge? What is the second challenge? 
what is the background maybe I don't mm -hmm. know what they're really trying to say here but just from the images as well they're quite small and if you look here this is also a photocopied image and you can see that this is really pretty much impossible to read for anyone right and you say impossible to read for anyone and we're actually looking at this on a computer screen right so imagine if you were in a big conference room um, or a big conference hall even it would be impossible to see right so impossible to see so if we were to present this ourselves we would say okay whatever the materials were that you want to introduce just introduce them individually or introduce them as much larger images um, in the same slide that's okay too but individually or grouped as a larger slide would be nice and also whatever challenges you have introduce those challenges with a keyword and then speak of the challenge or present the image of that challenge afterwards. Yeah, I would definitely agree with that. Okay, so now this one here they're talking about um, what they're looking for from manufactured uh, nanomaterials and so they've listed all of the elements and then of course all the different you know aluminum and zinc and iron and, and copper and chromium and I'm just showing off now, but yes, you um, are. Yeah, I'm just showing off now with my knowledge. Because I had no idea. Right, I know, and actually made most of those up. <laughs> Do you know what AG is, by the way? Um, I don't, but you're going to embarrass me. Yes, now. it's silver, actually. Okay. Anyway, so I'll take over here. <laughs> uh, the the other thing iron, about iron dye. What is this? Um, I Please, Carl. This is not a science lesson. Okay. All right. Uh, the other thing, really, here is. The person has used different colors on here, of course, right? And we do have to be very, very careful with colors that we use on slides, of course, uh, because, you know, perhaps if we use a particular color, we won't be able to see it correctly. Um, and here, I think the green that's been used here for some of the text, that's going to be a little difficult to see. Right, exactly. So uh, you might want to think about slide color, but or the text color, but in this case here with all the different items that they have a uh, more white space between each item mm -hmm. would have been better and maybe limit it to only about four or five at the most because there are I believe here approximately 10 or 12 different things are talking about so separate those onto maybe a couple of slides if you need to make a list and it's good they didn't use bullet points here so at least separate them into different slides so the text is going to be larger for people to actually see what the different elements are that you're talking about Definitely. So, whoa, this is this is one that... <laughs> <laughs> well, excuse my laughter out loud there. But tables. Tables are always a little bit of a nightmare. And we do have to be careful with them because there's too much information clearly on this table. And obviously the presenter is trying to tell us a lot of different things here. For instance, they've obviously highlighted some numbers here. Um, but that's not going to be able to be seen clearly. From well, far the problem away. with this, though, is that if they do want to just highlight the four different things they're highlighting, they could mention that what they're going to talk about is the type of elements that they want to mention and the composition of those elements within whatever product or chemical analysis they're doing here. So they're going to say, okay, I'm going to talk about a chemical analysis uh, about this particular product, and I want to just mention that there are this list of ingredients however I want to highlight these four and then have a slide that just shows those four and then mention why those four uh, key areas are important in the presentation or, or for the audience to know so that's what I would do instead of showing all of this because someone's gonna go through all this and not really pay attention to what you're saying so if you're only gonna talk about four things and just talk about those four things and and don't show any of this other stuff I think so and also down at the bottom of the slide we've got obviously three things that the presenter wants to make clear uh, because we've got the call outs here at the bottom so maybe even those could be three separate slides also sure and they're related to the different things that they've highlighted so yes definitely and now this is an image we haven't seen very many images so let's talk about this one here and this one here they're trying to compare the different types of um, localization so they're trying to find them by this TEM which I don't really know what that is but from the slide from this image on the left here and uh, these two black and white images we can see they're comparing two different types they're comparing this conventional TEM which this with this um, I don't know HAADF stem so right. the the stem part I'm guessing is similar so they're comparing how they're analyzing this, I'm guessing, or how they're, um, yeah, right, how they're analyzing it with the microscope. So you can see here they're using something to look at this material, but again, it's a photocopy and not a real image, and it really takes away from 
you know what they're trying to explain. So it'd be better to show these two bigger, and then maybe talk about this later on, and maybe what is the key element that is important for analyzing using this particular uh, tool. I, I think so, Khan. As you've already pointed out, the image on the right of the microscope is all the detail that's written there really needed. Now, of course, we don't know because we weren't present uh, for right. this presentation itself, but I'm guessing you don't need all this information here. Well, in fact, if you look at it, there's actually two arrows here. And it looks like they're just highlighting these two areas of this right. microscope. So if they could have shown a picture of the large microscope itself and then had another slide that focused on that particular or these two particular areas that they want to mention specifically, then it would have been more clear to the audience that, okay, these are the two areas that we want to talk about. So... Yeah, and just one other thing, of course, remember the more text you put on your slide, people, even if they can't read it, they will try to read it. Right, and this is pretty much the same thing as we've talked about, so we're not going to go too much into that. And this one here, what I want to talk about here, actually, is not only because of the images are kind of small, but what they're doing right here, how they have this indented, is mm -hmm. actually not good for the eye. So you want to keep everything aligned, okay? Yes. And this is fine. Actually, the font in this is, is okay with the size, but I think... Uh, depending on how they presented it, it would make a difference. And I think this, I don't know if this is actually part of this up here. I'm not exactly sure if this new trends part is part of this. Uh, it's hard to tell. It is hard to tell because obviously they've changed the color as well of the text there. Right. So now here we have a graph. So maybe this is the last thing we're going to talk about here is this graph. Now the graph itself, you can see there's a you know obviously quite a bit of data talking about fraction percentage, aerodynamic equivalent diameter in micrometers. So they highlight a few different points, but it looks like they really are just going to mention these two areas, the respirable and the thoracic. So they're talking about what the problem is, right? Mm -hmm. So they're talking about what the problem is. Something is not enough. Less than 100 nanometers is not enough. So they really should have just said, okay, why is it enough? And just show specifically you know, in a, in a maybe larger, just a, the numbers themselves or with a much clearer uh, image than this. It's really quite small. Right. Again, this is just a classic example of too much information. Right, exactly. Okay. So let's wrap it up there. So what we've talked about pretty much is just, what, be careful of fonts? Be careful of fonts. Uh, be careful of colors. And, of course, be careful with the information you're trying to present, what is the key information you're trying to present on the slide and only show that and make individual slides for individual points that you want to mention. Yes, and always think of what your audience really needs to know from this presentation. Right, exactly. Okay, so there you have it. That was a little critique. And again, you know, the person that made this is not against you personally. Okay, we don't dislike you or anything like that. It just happened, we just found yours and wanted to, you know, show people this one. I'm sure you're very, very knowledgeable in your, in your subject matter. Uh, so don't get too upset. But anyway, thank you very much for listening and hope you guys learned something from that. Speak to you next time.